welcome. We unravel a tale that would make even the most seasoned gossip columnist blush. It's a masterclass in how not to discuss the complexities of royal life and family dynamics. So picture this, if you will, a cozy studio where an historian and biographer, I guess also a royal expert, sits comfortably spinning a narrative that's as tangled as a crown of thorns. Our protagonist is Hugo Vickers. He paints a picture of Prince Harry as a man trapped, unhappy, and on the verge of abandoning his family to return to the royal fold. But let's peel back that layer of onion, or onion, shall we? Welcome once again. This is Majesty Sussex Report. I'm Antonio, and it's an absolute pleasure to have you join us. Thank you for spending some of your valuable time with us today. And, well, you're here for a reason, so I'm not going to give any preamble or talk much more. Let's just get right to it. So what do you think has been the biggest crisis in the royal family over the past 50 years? Well, of course, 50 years doesn't take in the abdication. So obviously, I suppose the death of Diana, 1997, was a big crisis point. But at the risk of being controversial, will the arrival of Meghan Markle prove to be a bigger one in the long run? Who knows? Well, I got in trouble before on this show with some viewers for suggesting that I thought that Harry's departure was the biggest crisis in the past 50 years. Um, but I'm with you. I think that period of time between the Duchess of Sussex arriving, everything changing, um, and then them leaving, I think, was a, was, was, is a huge crisis that the royal family are still trying to, trying to cope with. I think that um, it's, it's quite interesting, all that, because I was, as no doubt you were, in Windsor the day they got married, and the popularity and the goodwill towards them was enormous. And I don't think it was the press. I think she succeeded in eroding that very, very quickly. And what I find unforgivable is the stress that she, she put on the late Queen in the last couple of years of her life. Yeah, I think you're right. Um. All right. So Hugo's response contains several inaccuracy and overlooks critical context regarding Meghan and her relationship with the royal family as well as the media's role in shaping public perception. So let's try and address some of what he said. At the time of Meghan and Harry's wedding, the tabloid press was already publishing negative stories about Meghan. They contacted her father and created that entire fiasco that happened prior to her wedding. And if I'm not mistaken, someone by the name of Carolina, or is it Caroline, or is it I'm a Dixie girl? I'm, I'm not sure which one it is. Went down to Mexico to persuade Thomas Markle, allegedly, I guess. I wonder what kind of methods of persuasion did she use? She might have flipped her hair a lot. Possibly. So Thomas Markle and the tabloid press created a damaging narrative. Despite Megan's and Harry plea with this man to stop collaborating with the tabloids, Monsieur Markle continue to <laughs> just make a clown of himself and by association embarrassing his daughter and putting her through awful, 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 awfulness at one of the most important times of her life 
And not only that, in front of the world. Was it for financial gain? Was it for something else? I don't know. Wasn't there, but Catalina was. Miss Dixie was. Or is her name Caroline Graham? Allegedly. This manipulation by the press contributed significantly to the tension and stress surrounding the wedding. So, Mr. Hugo, you saying that, oh no, the press didn't start anything. How convenient of you. What 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 do you have? Have amnesia? Because it seems like all of you get amnesia all of a sudden. And you have a selective memory. In regards to the Queen, and this really bugs me when they do it, because they do it all the time. It bugs the living be Jesus out of me. The late Queen Elizabeth II publicly expressed her affection for Meghan and Harry. During her Platinum Jubilee celebrations, the Queen made special arrangements to ensure Meghan and Harry had a prominent entrance, highlighting her respect and love for them. Furthermore, she facilitated a private meeting, planned it with her grandson so she can see her great-grandchildren, Prince Archie and Princess Lilibeth, showcasing her commitment to family unity. But she could only do so much, especially at that time and, and at that age. And how dare you? You weren't there. How dare you insult her grandson by implying the things that you're implying? You're not even implying it, you're saying it. Shame on you. Shame on you. The media often evokes the Queen's name to blame Meghan for various issues within the royal family. This tactic serves to deflect from the actual sources of conflict, primarily fueled by the press itself. Now, the stress attributed to the Queen in her final years was more like a result of, let me see, her idiotic children, especially, well, the one that's now the king, with all due respect, and the one that, let me see again, what did he do? Um, he got his mother to pay millions of pounds, to, according to him, to a woman he doesn't know, has never met, right? He doesn't know this woman. He's never met her. But he got his mother to pay millions of pounds to her. I, I'm sorry, folks. I am going to shut this episode down because I have a flight to catch. I'm heading over. And I have to have a conversation, a conversation with Andres also known as Andrew, okay? Because I need me some of that money. He doesn't know me. He doesn't know my name. So maybe I'll get some, you know, it, they conversation might go. Excuse me. Hi, hi, Andrew. Andrew, excuse me, Andrew. Yes, 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 yes. Um, so... You got your mother, right, to send money, like millions of pounds. No, don't go. Don't walk away. No, no. This is serious, man. This is serious. Listen, this is serious. I listen. No, no, no. See, I'm totally serious. So you got your mama to send millions of pounds to a woman you never met, you never knew, you don't know her name or any of that, right? Allegedly, I'm just saying, you don't have to answer completely, just just, just nod. Okay, perfect, 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 perfect. So, what's my name? You don't know? Have you ever met me before? You haven't? Okay, so you don't know me at all, right? Okay, perfect, so you don't know me, you've never met me, you don't know my name, you've never seen me before. So when can I expect some millions coming my way, please? No, I'm serious. What? 
how, how old I, am I over? Yes, 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 I'm, I'm over 18. I'm, I'm, I'm legal age. Why are you walking away? Hey, hey, I'm serious. Why, what is, Andrew, Andrew, dude, why are you walking away? What do you mean I'm, because I'm over 18? Dude. So is, is, is the, is the, did you, but you said you didn't meet her. You said you didn't. Oh. Oh. That's how that conversation might go. Pardon my bad acting there, but gee, I, I couldn't help myself. Now, here is where the sort of this one, you know, it 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 it, it hits you in in every every possible way. If you have an ounce of of empathy, an ounce of dignity, or any 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 compassion that these people so lack. Comparing the arrival of Meghan Markle to the death of Princess Diana as a crisis within the royal family is not only deplorable, despicable, disproportionate, and deeply unfair. Princess Diana's death was a tragic event that profoundly impacted the royal family profoundly impacted Prince Harry and the world. Meghan's entry into that family, while for some of you was controversial and the media manipulation and the racial biases and, and, and attacks that, that, that completely went her way, doesn't equate to such a profound loss. Not like anything that they did was right. But this comparison was just absolutely awful. And for him to sit there and say, oh, well, when the black biracial chick came into the picture, everything changed, you know? All of a sudden, they were playing hip hop music and rap. I don't know. Like, did you see what Prince Harry started wearing? Like uh, baggy jeans and his hat backwards. And he started to use some, some signs. I don't know what those signs mean. I think they like yo 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 and this and that and 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 it was awful. I mean, he was speaking like someone from I don't know what's that place called in L.A. The 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 com the com something the com center. No, it's not the com center. What is it? Isn't there where she's from? Wasn't her mother selling stuff on the streets? What? what? You freaking idiot! Prince Harry made it so clear. His decision to leave in consultation with his wife was driven by a desire to protect his family from the same fate that his mother. I'm so angry. <laughs> I'm trying not to be. These freaking people, man. And they sit there with just this, this, this smog because they know. And if they don't know, they've convinced themselves. Prince Harry's choice was about safeguarding his wife, and at the time his child, now his children, from the toxicity and that relentless public scrutiny and all that nonsense. And you sit there. Oh, he's gonna, oh. Talking to Harry and Meghan, where do you think they will be in 10 years time? You, you've mimed. <laughs> um, I think he'll come home. I yeah. think he'll come home. And if he comes home, we must be very nice to him because he won't particularly want to. He, he's quite angry, I think, and he's quite, and he, he to, to me... If he will come home alone? Uh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Uh, the King, has, as I mentioned before, has left the door wide open for him to do that. And, um, you know, he does doing such a good job before. And as we've said earlier in the programme, I mean, he looked so happy. And because 
usually you're happy when you're doing your duty and you're doing it for other people and you're putting things into life. If you're taking things out of life, you're not. And at the risk of, I'll probably get a lot of hate mail, but I personally think he looks, that he's petrified of losing her and looks slightly petrified of her, to be honest. But um, that's kind of a tricky one to say, isn't it? It's a horrible syndrome to get into. Well, we were told last year, since people were quite close to him, that he was feeling a little bit homesick. Um, and, I, and I do worry, it's like, when, when they were here, they were apparently so full of ideas, um, you know, waking up at five in the morning, coming up with all these ideas, and I am disappointed they've gone to America and the, well, after, after, after turning on the Royal Family of all their shows, they're just bringing out a polo show, a cookery show, uh, and picking up awards. You know, I don't, I don't know Harry, but I, I don't think that's the life that maybe he wants. What's terribly sad is that the, the late Queen gave them the whole of the Commonwealth yeah. to explore. I mean, the, that was going to be William and Catherine would do the home things. So the Commonwealth, to which they were both committed. I mean, she'd been doing things in the Commonwealth before she married him. It seemed like a perfect fit. And that wasn't enough for them, which is very sad. I, I don't know. It's very, it's a, it, could have all, it could have all been so wonderful, and it's turned out not to be. I I love Matt's concern for Harry. Oh, so genuine, so so refreshing to see his sincerity and concern for for Harry. He he doesn't know the man, but but he's so concerned. He's con he, he's concerned that they had these great ideas at five a.m. in the morning while they were in the UK, but they moved to America and now that they've, they're there, they're doing just some cookery show and 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 some polo show. Oh, shut up. Give me a break. I, I don't know what 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 manure orifice these people speak out from. Because they have no finances or financing, right? The the father took away security, knowing very well that Harry and Megan and his grandchild, Prince Archie, had a high a security threat, similar or more than the monarch at the time. He knew it and still took the security away. How do you expect them to like survive? Where do they stay? Where do they eat? Did, did, did they just find a park somewhere and 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 pitch a tent? Or as 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 you moronic people kept wishing that Harry would end up at like a fast food restaurant wearing a uniform and selling burgers. Oh, you were just laughing in glee of happiness, you miserable. May the Lord bless you. Hugo's narrative suggesting that Prince Harry will leave his black biracial wife, because that's what he wants to say, Meghan Markle and their mixed race children, because we know they've got at least one drop of black blood in them. One may have red hair, the other one may have dirty blondish hair, but guess what? They've got one drop of that black blood in them. Prince Archie and Princess Lilibeth to return to the UK. He's going to leave them. Return to the UK alone is not only unfounded, but also reveals a troubling undercurrent of, let's say it, kids, racism. Some good old racism. But the United Kingdom is not racist. We ain't got racist people here. What are you talking about? Absolutely not. Racism, I've never, ever been, been discriminated against, ever. I mean, I am I'm a colored person. I've 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 I'm I'm I'm, 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 I'm and I have never experienced such a thing. May I remind you that if it wasn't for us, the blacks would have never been freed. It's true, you know. It's true. We saved them. I mean, they were savages. They were awful people. I mean, you know what I mean. You freaking idiot. The notion that Harry will abandon his family perpetuates this harmful racial stereotypes 
and seeks to invalidate the existence and legitimacy of Harry's and Meghan's children. Because that's what they want. That's what they want. They want those kids out of the line of succession. But you know what? Not gonna happen. These comments reflect a broader systemic issue of racism that Megan and her children face, not only from segments of the media, but also from individuals within the royal commentary circle and at large. But let's say this again, there's no racism. There's, there's, there's so no racism that we don't even see color. We don't. Same in Canada, we don't see color. Same in Australia, we don't see color. I don't know about New Zealand because I've never been there. I should have gone when I went to Australia. Well, in the US, come on. Come on, my brothers and sisters. They, they see color. <laughs> they see you coming and they're like, yeah, we see color. But oh, trust me, they see color here too in Canada. They see color in the UK. Now let's just talk a little bit about um, his good old pal, King Charles. Now, was it news to you folks as it was for me that King Charles has left the door open? Which door? I would like to know which one. Is the door invisible? Is the door behind a closet? Does the door take you to Narnia? Inquisitive minds would like to know. So contrary to Hugo's portrayal of King Charles, actions have not consistently shown an open door policy. Instances that I can mention, such as ignoring Harry's attempts to meet with him while Harry's in the UK. I mean, the man, his... <laughs> it's amazing how busy he gets. His schedule gets packed when Harry arrives. Come on. Always. Not only that, as I said before, he stripped his son and his grandson and Megan of security, knowing the danger that they were in. And listen, you farts, don't come to me about, well, the king, you don't know anything about British society at all. Like, the king is not, he has no power over that. It's a government thing. You should learn. You should learn about how it works in the UK. I think you should learn. Because something tells me that I know more than you. So, no need to leave me a little message. Because I kind of end up laughing. I mean, you could, because it's engagement for me, and also makes me laugh, it makes my day. To think about the ignorance that you so willfully attach yourself to, and then decides to display it by typing it to someone you don't know. So tell me this, he was willing to let his son and his new grandson be in danger. But his brother, the one I, I, I tried to speak with, who did allegedly only hangs out with, you have to be of a certain age, I'm trying to be careful here, he, he gives him security, right? So let's go by, by your crazy, um, demented head 
and tell me if this makes sense to you. And maybe it does because maybe that's just the type of person you are, but takes away security. Let's say the government did. He had nothing to do with it. Government takes away security from a prince knowing, and this disinformation is from the Met, by the way, the Metropolitan Police, okay? This is their information. They're saying how high of a risk the prince is and his wife and his child. These people have been, 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 been convicted and in jail for this stuff. But no. So he knows that because he's the sovereign. He's, well, at the time. So he knows this stuff. And he doesn't offer them security. Here's my question to you. What kind of father is that? And you may argue and say, well, Harry did this and Harry did that. <laughs> Take a mirror. Look at yourself. Take a mirror. Look at yourself and start listing the things that you've done to your father or your mother. And perhaps they did stop loving you. I don't know what you did. And if you have children, maybe think of it that way. If you would do the same things to your children. Now that man you call king, he's only king in word. There's no heart, there's no action, there's no impact. He's like a noodle. Gosh, I don't mean to insult noodles. Noodles are so yummy. Well cooked right. Hmm. He didn't even offer security for his for his son. You know what hurts? And you may you may rejoice in in my hurt. Just in picturing Megan speaking to that man, begging him to please not take security away from Harry. She said, it's okay. I know my place where I am with regards to you folks. I don't need the security. I'll manage somehow. And you know what? I'll take my son also. We'll manage, but he's always had security. He was born a prince. Mind you, Archie was born one too. And he, he did nothing. He did nothing. Now the woman whose tampon he wants to put somewhere, what does he want to do? Use it as a lollipop? Envision that folks. What does he want to do with, with, with it? Now, if that woman, that thing came to him for her disgraceful children or whatever, oh, he doesn't have a problem giving out millions because mommy wants it. She's my mommy, she's my lover, she's my everything. I'd give her everything she wants and she's happy. demented honestly he sits there and has the gall to say the king has the doors open and they've always been open that he's never said anything that Harry wrote his book Spear in the documentary and the king was so dignified, he didn't say a word, not a word. Maybe he didn't, but maybe the tampon did. Yeah? Was it the tampon then that, that said the things that were in the tap? Was it the tampon? The tampon speaks, doesn't it? Does it? I'm not sure. What voice would it have if it spoke? Would it go, Ew! I feel so sorry for the tampon. Poor thing. Hmm. I wonder when they're making them, if when they say, you know what, your destiny is going to be that, and they like, they just say, you know what, it's I, I don't want to live anymore. And they just like, I don't know, jump off the truck, head into the 
boots or something. Okay, I'm going to get off that topic. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Really, I know. I know. I know. I don't need a lecture. I know it's disgusting. But picture it. <laughs> oh, baby Jesus. Give us, give us, give us patience. Give us. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know? Harry and Meghan's decisions to step back from royal duties was was partly driven by security concerns. Knowing that that report from the Metropolitan Police that those threats were real. And still, what kind of people, what kind of people? Huh. Hugo, you may not believe this, but Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, is a grown man Grown man, grown, grown. He's not a child. He is a decorated military veteran who served two tours in Afghanistan. What have you done? Hmm? What have you done? What's your contribution? He has faced the rigors of combat and the responsibilities of leadership. What have you done? Which starkly contrasts with your infantilization of him. Furthermore, Harry's creation, the Invictus game, he founded the Invictus game, no matter what you people want to say. Oh, he was a patron. It, it was some of the royal patronage. It's a patron. He's a patron. He didn't, he didn't. Mm -hmm. Now, let me tell you something, baby boys and girls. My little, ah, I'm a little mentally confused. If it were, do you not think that the viciousness, the ugliness, the pettiness of that royal family that you so adore, that they would have taken it away from him a long time ago, like they've taken everything else, which no, he can't take away. Him, the soul of his mother, the heart, can't take that away, that's him. No matter what you do, Now, he founded the Invictus Games, my darlings, a highly successful, let me say that again, a highly successful event supporting wounded, injured, and sick servicemen and women. Demonstrates his capability, his capacity his commitment to service and to creating an impact, doing the work. Now, Hugo's comment that Harry looks petrified. Hugo, I think you're projecting, darling. Darling, sweetie. <laughs> you're scared of black women, don't you? Even if they have one drop of blood, don't you? You're scared of them. Oh, you shouldn't be. No, you shouldn't. They're great. My mom is a black lady. She's wonderful. Black women are great. What are you scared of? Huh? Huh? Come on, tell me. Let's talk. Petrified. Harry looks petrified of Megan. I mean... It's, it's, should I even say it? You're tapping into that, that, that stereotype of the angry black woman 
that trope often used to unfairly criticize and undermine women of color. Now, I know Megan has faced relentless media attacks and public scrutiny, which are rooted in both racism, sexism, misogyny. This narrative not only diminishes Megan's character, but also discards the genuine love and partnership that Harry and Megan have and what the display also in public. <laughs> Try getting those other two to do anything. You should though. You should be paying attention to them. They're the ones eating up your tax money. They're the ones having helicopter rides and private planes. I don't really care whether they do or they don't. I could, I could care two banana chips, honestly. They wanna do that, do it. It's not their freaking money. You people are willing to just throw them hundreds of thousands of pounds every year for for what again that's I, I i don't i don't pay it hang on a second do we pay i'll have to check that yeah i'll have to check that because i i think i think there's there there is something that we i know i know we pay when when they come here so stupid Harry and Meghan's departure from the UK, as I said before, and I'll say it again, had everything to do with the tabloid press, the harassment, the relentless lies, concerns for their security, and zero support from a family that was just willing to let another situation happen. They didn't care. They still don't care. A new moron. Man, today I've used some words that I usually don't. I think maybe I'm just tired. You know, Hugo's commentary reflects, reflects a, a sort of broader issue within the media portrayal of Harry and Meghan. The persistent negative coverage perpetuates this biased narrative, this racist narrative that fails to acknowledge any sort of effort in how these two people are living a life of service and advocacy, the impact that they make. Megan's philanthropic and ad ad advocacy for women's rights alongside Harry's ongoing projects should be recognized rather than criticized at every corner by these people. For heaven's sake, they, sh they, sh they should be thanking them because it's because of Meghan and Harry that they still have a, a, a seat to talk manure. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's journey has, has, has been marked by significant challenges, many of which are exacerbated by the media their racist attitude, bias, unconscious bias, unconscious racism, whatever you want to call it. And some in the public too willing to accept it and, 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 and eat up all the lies. They will never approach this with balance, balanced per perspective. They'll never recognize the contribution. They'll never admit the real threats that that family faces. To the streets, my heartbeat never rests. Yeah, met a girl who's so sweet. Proof that's making she's the best. Oh, in the starlight, we still shine. Love like ours, so divine. Yeah, but your blood running strong. Together, we belong. Whoa, I'm your warrior prince, fighting for your love. My heart, I confess, you're my. Across oceans we declare 
I love it's in the air oh. In your eyes I see my dreams Love's reality it seems yeah. Through the storms and all the rain We'll rise again and again nah. Hand in hand we'll face it all Won't let this kingdom fall Whoa. I'm your warrior prince Fighting for your love My heart I confess You're my angel from above If anyone had told me that we would be reaching the seventh year and the relentless obsessive hatred directed at Meghan Markle and Prince Harry, particularly Meghan, is still active in their hatred. To those who are part of that community, that group, I have a question. What void in your life are you trying to fill with this ceaseless vitriol? For almost seven years, you've spewed hatred daily mirroring the toxic narrative of the UK tabloid press. Your obsession has transcended mere criticism. It's become a pathological fixation that speaks volumes about your own insecurities and prejudices. Let's be clear. Your behavior is not normal. It's not healthy. It's not justified. It's a manifestation of deep-seated issues that deserve introspection and, frankly, professional help. Why does a woman you've never met, who's living her life away from you, wherever you are, occupy so much space in your mind? Is it because Megan represents something you fear? A strong, independent woman of color who dared to challenge the status quo? Or is it because tearing her down gives you a sense of power in your otherwise unfulfilling lives? Your actions betray a disturbing lack of empathy and a worrying detachment from reality. You've created an alternative universe where Megan is the villain in a story of your own making, ignoring facts, context, and basic human decency in the process. This obsession is not just harmful to Megan and Harry. It's coercive to your own well-being. It's robbing you of time, energy, and the ability to engage with the world in a meaningful way. Your legacy is becoming one of hatred and bitterness rather than of accomplishment or kindness. I implore you to step back and examine your motivations. What does this crusade say about you? What are you really angry about? Is it truly about Megan and Harry? Or is it a 
projection of your own frustrations and inadequacies. It's time to, 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 to break free from this toxic cycle. Channel your energy into something positive. Seek help if you need it. Remember that behind your screens and keyboards are real people with real feelings. Look, in the end, Megan and Harry will continue to live their, their lives. While you're left with this hollow satisfaction of having spread negativity in the world. Is that really the mark you want to leave? It's never too late to change course for your own sake and for the sake of of a more compassionate society. I urge you to let go of this hatred. Find a purpose that uplifts rather than destroys. Your obsession with Megan and Harry isn't hurting them nearly as much as it's hurting you. The world has real problems that need solving. Imagine what could be accomplished if you directed your passion and energy towards actual issues instead of fabricated grievances against people you've never met. It's time to wake up. Step out of this, that, 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 that echo chamber and rejoin the real world. Your fixation isn't righteous. It's sad. And it's time to end it.